Hey, what is going on guys? Rulanel here, and I figured I should make some more Python tutorials for your faces. So, we're jumping into the image module. Now, the image module is part of the Python imaging library, and uh, that allows you to create, modify, and convert image files in a lots of different formats, like using the Python language. And that's pretty awesome. So, in layman's terms, you just get to work with images. That's pretty cool. I mean, typically w with some tasks or some assignments you might be working with, um, you're going to be working with images, so you should have something to be able to process them, create them like on the fly, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to um, try and quickly whip out the boilerplate stuff that we need to run our code. So how have you guys been? <laughs> Is the weather nice where you are? <laughs> I'm not going to um cover how to install this as usual. I know in most of my tutorial series I don't bother explaining how to install the library or the module. Um, if you guys have trouble with it, you can just like let me know, you can ask, leave a comment, or send me a personal message, and uh, I can make a video on how to do it, but I mean, you guys probably know how to work through with PIP. Um, most of the modules that we work with are going to be installed by default to begin with, um, but if there are any issues, be sure to let me know. In the meantime, though, we are going to move on, and I'll introduce you guys to um, the new function. So, image new will very easily create the image that we want. Um, I'm not going to save any files right now, so I'm not going to create a file name or anything. Um, but if we're going to want to work with this, we should use uh, actually create an object for it. So image is going to equal whatever this new function returns for us. And um, because it's something that we're working with in memory, just to be safe, I'm going to delete the image right when we're done working with it. Now, the image new or the new function takes some parameters. It takes the mode and the size at, at minimum. You can supply an optional parameter that is the color and we'll work through with some of that. But the first thing we need to go through is the word mode because with any module, with any library that we start to work with, there are specific definitions and terminology and lingo that we need to know. So the mode of an image describes the way that it represents colors and each mode is represented by like a string. So um, one, in this case, that mode represents black and white, or monochrome, where there's only one bit per pixel. L represents grayscale, where there's one 8-bit byte per pixel. Um, there's RGB, of course, which just works with red, green, and blue. It's the true RGB color. There's three bytes per pixel. There's RGBA, where you have transparency, just sort of tacked on and added to the RGB color system. There is, of course, CMYK, uh, Cyan, Cyan, I don't know for sure how to pronounce that. Magenta, yellow, and black color. There's four bytes per pixel. There is this thing that I never freaking use, but color video format. There are three 8-bit pixels, and there's I, and there is F. Now, those are using 32-bit integer pixels and 32-bit float pixels, correspondingly. Um, I'm not going to touch a whole lot of those I'm typically going to be working with RGB, because, I mean, if you're working with an image, normally you want color, unless you're, like, building a, a sort of framework where you're using images to work with your program, and maybe you want to have grayscale so it's simple and small. But in that case, you could use 1 or L. Um, so let's work with RGB. And like I said, we need a size. So I'm going to create a variable for that, and it actually takes it as a tuple. But I want to keep track of the width and height variables as well. So I'm going to say... Size equals width and height, which equal 320 and 240. Now I can pass in that size tuple right into our function. And if I were to run this right now, if I created this, um, it adds the image to memory and then it immediately deletes it. But I want to be able to see it so I can show it to you guys. So um, the image module has a nice little function called show with the corresponding image object, and that will take um, uh, one of your programs on your computer. If you're on Windows, it might take like Paint. If you're on Unix, it might take XV or Image Magic, whatever you have installed, and it'll use that to just very quickly display the image. So if I run this, I can bring this down here, and you can see Image Magic is just displaying this black 
image created 320 pixels wide, 240 pixels tall. So there it is, there's our image. Now we can pass in, like I said, a color. And let's say we want it to be white. All right, there it is. Now, you guys notice, I just passed that in as a string. And it's interesting because um, image module has support for the common HTML color names. And um, so if I wanted to, I could just type in red and it would know, okay, uh, he wants to use the red color. Um, you can type in like salmon and all the really, really funky HTML colors that HTML actually has support for. Um, silver and, and stuff like that. Now, it's case insensitive. I could just type in like silver with really weird case and it'll know, okay, it, he still means that one. So you can use the HTML colors if you'd like, and you can, of course, use the hexadecimal value. Let's say um, FFF, FFF. If you guys know the color, this should be white. We can throw in um, whatever mess we want in here, ADEF32 or something, and we have this nice weird lime green color. So you have support for hex. Um, another thing that I want to introduce to you is, of course, RGB. Um, if you're working in the string, you can just say RGB and then the values that you want. Let's say 205, 100, 200. I have this little purple thing. And they also have support for percents. So let's say 0% red, 100% um, green, and 0% blue. Oh, actually add the percent sign there. Run this, now it's percent green, it's 100% green. And there is, of course, HSL, which stands for um, Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. Now, these, the latter two, the last two, they work as percentages, and um, the other one, Hue, is a, actually a color given as an angle between 0 and 360. So if I said 0, that's red, 120 is green, and blue is 240. So I'm just keep it as zero, red right now. Um, you know, next one, saturation. Saturation is um, between zero and 100%. Gray is going to be zero. Full color is 100%. So I'm going to leave that as 100% right now. And lightness is another percentage value between um, zero, of course, and 100, because it's a percent. Um, black, and completely black, is zero. So if I were to run that, you can see it's black. 100% is pure white because it's incredibly bright and 50 is just plain old normal brightness, normal uh, lightness, so right now that is red. Okay. So, yeah, that's all I want to show off to you in this video. Very, very simple, very, very easy. Um, just taking an image or at least creating one in memory, having us to be able to play with the colors or at least when we initialize it we can know what it is that we're working with. Now, before I, let, uh, before I do let you guys go, let's say we wanted to run um, L, or a grayscale mode, or a black and white mode with a specific color. Like, this would have been uh, red, but right now you can tell it's gray. So, typically you'll want to know what mode you're working in, and there is a variable if you're working in an image object to um, figure that out, and that's great. We're going to get into that really soon, but... Just as an introductory video, I wanted you guys to know what the image module is, what can it do, what are the modes, how can we create an image and at least work with it in memory, and um, we're really getting the ball rolling. So, awesome. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I noticed I never even finished my shebang line, <laughs> and uh, if you had a great time with this one, please subscribe. Maybe like the video, leave me a comment, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.